Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a sped up voiced over version of the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show from Thursday, March 5th. Uh, we live stream over on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel every Thursday at 1030 Central Time. And so this this month, this week, <laughs> bleh, this week <laughs> it was exploring abstract art. Abstract art is a, an art form that tries to convey a feeling or an idea of something without actually using the, the realistic version of what it is. And I named this piece Under the Suns because what I was thinking about was an abstract abstract idea of hot sunny day over um, a green and blue landscape. So does it have a sun? Well it has multiple ones really. It's got some multiple uh, circular pieces on it. Does it have a landscape? It has a green and blue area with some lines that could be fields or maybe they're buildings. I don't know but it's it's abstract. It gives you an idea of something without spelling it out for you that it, that's what it is. So I'm going to post this in my sunshine art, whatever I call it, on the Facebook and the challenge for this month will be to do an abstract art piece um, representing sun or sunshine. Um, I haven't managed to get that in there yet. I've been very busy with my real life and I uh, haven't put up the challenge yet in the group but it's just a separate Facebook group that I have we did moons last year and this year we're supposed to be doing suns if I would ever get the <laughs> the challenges up suns in different styles of art is what what the idea is behind the group I'm just being very bad at it but this will be my March piece for sun and it will it's my representation of the sun hot sun in the sky beating down over a nice landscape. So, very abstract. So I started with um, acrylic paint using a palette knife. I just wanted to fill up the white space. I wanted the idea of hot going to cool and a diagonal across the canvas. This is a 10 by 10 stretched canvas. Um, I like to play with color. I like to play with collage. And so I'm just getting a first layer down of kind of the way the color is going to be across the canvas. And then I'm going to collage over the top of it. As you can see at the top of the screen, I have some piles of different types of papers, painty papers, um, inky tissue paper, some paper that has some neo color on it, some gel printed paper, just different types. And I pick them out based on colors. And then I'm going to be using, of course, my Liquitex Matte Gel Medium to go and do some collage over the top of this. So some people in the group today when we were doing the live stream ask about medium. Um, you know, you watch videos and they say, use matte medium, use matte medium. Well, there's a couple, there's several different types of mediums. There's gloss mediums, there's matte mediums, there's satin mediums, there's texture mediums, there's bead, glass bead gel and texture paste with fibers. And I mean, there's a lot of mediums out there. But she was asking, why are you using gel medium instead of matte medium? Well, this gel medium is matte medium. Matte refers to the the way that the light bounces off it. A gloss medium is very shiny and when light hits it you'll get a reflection. A matte medium is got something in it that makes the shine go away. Is it completely not shiny? No, there, may, there might be a little bit of shine to it but mostly it's just not shiny and the result of that is something that doesn't um, reflect light very much and it doesn't get fingerprints on it. It's my preference. Now gel medium is a thicker version of medium. You can get a fluid medium and some of the more inexpensive stuff like Mod Podge and Collage Podge from Aliens. Those are 
fluid mediums. And you can get them in matte or glossy. Sometimes they even come in satin. DecoArt has a, has a satin version of, of a medium, but it is a fluid medium. This is a gel medium, and it also can come from different companies. I prefer the Liquitex matte gel medium. It's thicker. The only time that I don't use the gel medium is when it is a very thin, fragile paper, like a tissue or a napkin. In those cases, I really do need to use a fluid medium and just kind of pat, 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 pat over it and let the fluid medium absorb into the napkin or tissue, make it um, transparent and um, not tear it. If you use a matte medium with those type of, of papers, you have a very high chance that the medium will catch the paper as you're going over the top and tear it. So I use almost exclusively a Liquitex matte gel medium. That's just my preference. Um, there is soft gel from Golden. Uh, DecoArt has some gel mediums, um, a little bit thinner in consistency, but still a gel medium. There's heavy gel mediums and things like that that are for making texture, but you could also use them for this type of a process that come from Prima Marketing and all those different ones. So Ranger has some. Everybody's got it. You just have to think about what finish do you want? Do you want it to be glossy and reflective or do you want it to be matte and mostly non-reflective? Do you, what kind of paper are you using? Are you using thicker papers? You want to use the gel. If you're using thinner papers, you might want a fluid. So there isn't a one size fits all. I know that, that it seems like there is. And of course, the first one we probably all started out with, with was Mod Podge. And it was like, okay, this is a one size fit all. Here's some Mod Podge, stick things down. Um, I've gone far, far beyond that at this point. And this is what I prefer. I also use a, a brush to apply the paper. Um, sometimes I use a flat collage brush if it's, if it's a bigger piece. This one I'm using a one inch flat uh, brush that's, you know, it's all gunky now from, from the <laughs> glues and things that have gone into it. So it's just becomes a glue brush. It's, it's, bleh, you know, <laughs> but it works great for glue. And I generally put some on the substrate, in this case canvas, and then some on the back of the paper. If the paper is thick, I definitely do that. Sometimes the paper will be deli paper or uh, maybe text weight paper, and I can just put the medium down onto the canvas and put the paper over the top, and it's enough. If the paper is really thick, you'll see me grab my spritz bottle and spritz it with water. That breaks down the fibers in the paper and allows it to lay flat and stick down much easier. So just kind of, you know, I'm, I've got all different types of paper here. It's not all the same. Um, I'm tearing it with a metal ruler into smaller pieces. This is a fairly small canvas, 10 by 10, not very big. It might even be eight by eight. No, I think it's 10 by 10. Yeah, because I remember I measured it, but um, it's, it's not big. It only needs small pieces of collage. So I'm following that same hot to cool diagonally across the canvas with my different little pieces of paper. I like I like painty papers and uh, gel printed papers and stenciled papers because they have pattern on them. I also like paper that has some paint over some text or something like that. I like I like all that variety that you get with your own papers and I I like to constantly make papers. I have more paper <laughs> than I could ever possibly. I mean, I need to make some really big pays, pay, paintings to, to use it up. And I should do that actually, because that would be fun. But I just haven't having uh, the space really to do extremely large pieces. You need a big studio for that. And mine's just a small bedroom. So um, someday I'll rent a space that's just one big open space with a concrete floor. It'll be awesome, but I don't know when that's going to be someday. Someday. <laughs> so I generally do smaller pieces because of that. Also, I like to film what I'm doing and if the smaller pieces fit on my desk under the camera and a large piece would not. So I wish that was someone that makes gigantic pieces of art. I wish that. I would like to do it. It would be fun. 
but I'd probably do exactly what I'm doing right now. It'd just be much larger, <laughs> bigger scale. So I've got pinks, I've got oranges, reds, yellows. I've got blue, light blue, dark blue, green, bright green, turquoise, um, just all kinds of papers on my desk and I'm tearing them into smaller pieces and gluing them down, making sure that there's no wrinkles. Um, sometimes you'll see me bring out a old old gift card. It's that kind of reddish thing on the, the right side there. And I scrape over the top of some of it. That is to smooth it out. Particularly deli paper, I find, likes to wrinkle. And it, it responds very well to having that thing scraped over it. So once I'm happy with my collage, I decide to move on to some stenciling and integration and adding some design as well as integration. This, this stencil is from Stencil Girl. It was designed by Mary Beth Shaw, the owner of Stencil Girl. And I think it's from a club. Um, of course, below the video, I'll put all the links to the things that um, I used so that you can find them if you'd like to duplicate what I'm doing. Uh, this stencil is interesting, and I think those things look like coffee beans. <laughs> so I decided to make a line of coffee beans. I don't know why. I just did. And then I like these little diamond shapes. And I'll be using some squares and some circles and different ones. Um, these are all stencil girl stencils, I know that. But they, this is my little pile of ones that I've cut apart. Sometimes there'll be a 9 by 12 stencil that really you can cut it into sections and use different sections as small stencils. And I have done that. Um, I also have some, you know, regular ones that are just what they are. But I decided to add some yellow. Um, I started out with white gesso and now I'm moving to yellow and then I'll move to other colors, staying with the same paints that I used before on the background and just um, now integrating those colors back into the foreground in case they, they weren't picked up somewhere on any of the collage paper that I used. I know this stencil is one from a larger piece that's been cut into smaller stencils. The tricky part for me about that is that I don't know what stencil it came from <laughs> because I've cut it up and it no longer has the words on it. But I do know they're all stencil girl, that's all I know. So I'll look them up and uh, try to highlight the ones in the description box below that I used, as well as the colors of paints and things like that, other products. This one just has hash marks and I thought it would be nice to put some of that. Uh, kind of looks like grass a little bit, but it's it's all very representational, a uh, visual representation of something that isn't specific, but does give you the idea of something. That's that's abstract art for you. <laughs> and these types of stencils are great for that. Uh, ones that just have circles or squares or rectangles or something like that. Squiggles are great for this to use with this type of an art form. So I have orange, I have bright green, white, yellow. I think I get out some light blue and some darker green just to make a few more little marks with my stencils. I'm using a toothbrush style stencil brush. Um, this is, they were designed to do makeup. It comes in a set and I'll, I'll put the link to that below. I got, a, got it off Amazon. It's not, not expensive. But this little tiny one, little circular tiny one is good for this type of work where you just have a very small space that you need to fill in and you don't want to get the paint everywhere all over the stencil. So once that was dry, I did a little bit more integration of these pieces, just using some of the paint that was left over in my finger. This is a great way to do it, um, to just rub on some of the paint, filling in some of those places where you think there's too much of an edge. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a thicker paper and a thinner paper, and there's a big line that you want to kind of camouflage, or you want to blend in something, you want to blend in um, the yellow, you know, blend it out further, whatever. You can do it with your fingers. I did put on Art Guard lotion before I started today because I knew I was going to get stuff all over my hands. That's a good way to protect your skin and um, protect you from the chemicals in paints and things. 
and also it's easier to get the stuff off when you're done if you have put the art guard on. It helps helps get everything off of your hands too. So I'm loving this. I think this looks great. I'm going to do some mark making next um, to finish it up a little bit. I decided to use a something called a china marker, which is kind of a, a waxy. Um, it's just waxy. That's all I have to say about it. Um, it kind of writes on there like a crayon, and then I can blend it using a blending stump or tortillion. Um, it's like a, a roll of paper that you can blend with. It's a different look from other things that I might have chosen to use. I want it to be a little bit blurry, a little bit, um, I don't know, I wanted to blend it. I started blending with my fingers. My finger got tired because of course this is a canvas surface which is kind of rough on you. So that's when I got out the blending stump and started to blend it down a little bit better. So I've made these, these intersecting lines and then I've also made some circles around the more circular shapes that I have and the intersecting lines represent maybe buildings or crop lines or something like that and then the circles are to represent the sun which in this on this world apparently there's multiple suns <laughs> the next tool that I got out is a fine line bottle it has fluid paint in it that I've put in there and I need to clean it out and put some new paint in it but I just haven't gotten around to it and I'm going around and adding more mark making around my circles and different places. I'm going to make some more lines. Um, this is adding my hand to the piece. Um, you know, I've got stenciling on there, which is unique to me because I only use parts of the stencils in different areas and not just one big flat stencil. But it's also nice to add your own touch to things by doing something with your hands, um, drawing or illustrating or making marks like this. So this is just fluid paint. It's, it's high flow, golden high flow in titanium white. And then I was gonna do, I was gonna do some more with the black, black fine liner that I have, but it's empty and gunky so I just need to take these apart and soak them and get them all clean. The fine liner, liner bottle does have a needle inside the lid that goes down into the needle point to keep it clear which is really nice that's why it's fun to use them because they make fine lines um, it's just it's just cool. So instead of the black fine liner I got out my Posca pen and I did some black lines here and there mostly inside the circles and just here and there. Um, then I decided I was going to add some gold leaf because why the heck not? Gold leaf is cool. <laughs> and I was going to use my Tombow Mono adhesive, which is kind of a, it's like a glue that stays tacky, like a post-it note, but it, it's apparently dead. It's empty it, or it's dried up. And so I just used some of the iCraft Media glue and I applied it with a ball stylus in little areas here and there. And then I put the gold flakes over the top, rub them down, let them dry for a while, and then I go over the whole thing with a stiff brush, in this case a stencil brush with like stiff bristles to get off any of the gold flake that's not attached. And it, it comes out really cool. It gets, makes a cool effect. So you will see that in the pictures that are at the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells if you have subscribed so that you'll know when there's a fresh new video on my channel. Um, I try to do that every other day. It's kind of been more like every third day lately because of my very busy, crazy life right now. Um, also, you can share this on Pinterest. I'm always grateful to see um, when my videos, I'm, I'm going through my Pinterest feed and my own video comes, I get very excited. It's like, oh, that's mine. That's mine. Somebody pinned it. And you can also share it on Facebook, um, Instagram, whatever you want. So 
I think that's pretty much it for me. I, I finalized it with a few more lines from the China marker and then I was pretty much done. I needed to brush off some more of those gold flakes and I did some splattering with both the black and the white pins. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.